What's up, all my fellow Jeepers? Look right there behind me. Right there is the AT&T building, otherwise known as the Batman building. You got downtown Nashville behind me. I'm staying on the banks of the Cumberland, Cumberland Park side of the Cumberland River. And what you see right here is the Riverside, Riverfront Park area. And you see right here, right above me, great big piece of artwork behind me. And as we turn around, again, Cumberland Park right there, Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans. We'll come on around this way, really bright light, pedestrian bridge, and the archway, the gateway bridge as they call it. All, LED, it's got like a line of LEDs that goes up around it right here. And depending on the holiday or depending on the occasion, they'll change the colors of the lot, change the colors of the LEDs. And even in patterns, pretty cool when they see it playing with it. Anyway, on with the story. Head to the Jeep Invasion a couple weeks ago and I was kinda, well, moseying right along. Thought I was making good time. I heard a lot of racket. Thought it was a drive shaft hitting my exhaust. I was wrong. So, basically what this video is about is about a little issue I had. It's not so much it's going to be a how-to, it's going to be a how, make, how to make do. It's one of those stories to where you take a bad situation, turn it into something good, and do the best you can with what you got. Okay? So, everyone, I'm going to quit gabbing. I'm going to let you guys get on with the video. So, roll them. I'm on my way to the Jeep Invasion and uh, Pigeon Forge and... I'm not sure what town or what city I'm in right now, but I just know I hit a bump on the highway, just a little dip, wasn't too bad at all. Next thing I know, I hear what's up. My exhaust is hitting my front drive shaft, and it's not stopping. So it's making me wonder if my exhaust has done come loose from the manifold. I mean, it's not ridiculously loud, like I've got a really bad exhaust leak, so I'm not sure what's up. So, luckily, I've got a shipping blanket with me because I've got on one of my shirts. And I'm about to crawl underneath this baby and see what the heck's going on. Then try to get myself up to Pigeon Forge for the Jeep invasion. Well, what sounded like a uh, dry shaft hit the exhaust. There is a place on the exhaust where it looks like, you know, it's been rubbed clean. And a place on the dry shaft where it's been rubbed clean. That's not what happened. Let me flip the camera, you'll see what's up. Yeah, so what do you see on the ground? Lots and lots of water. What has happened, the mount on my radiator broke and the fan has now chewed a hole through the radiator. I'm in Knoxville right now. I kind of figured out where I was at and there is an AutoZone. I mean, the van's really close. They said they're gonna have, they can have one there by four o'clock, which is just like less, right around two hours from now or so. So I just topped it off with water because I happen to keep a gallon of water with me. So I'm gonna try to make it to the advance right now. Got the radiator ordered, and these guys at this uh, Advanced Auto in Knoxville are freaking off the hook. They are so dang on nice. Uh, pulled around back. They got to run a water hose out to me. They said, heck, just change it out back. So I'm going to change this uh, radiator out and get back on the road. These guys here are just freaking awesome. Thank you guys. So, uh, seriously. Well, well, now it's just a waiting game. Wait for my radiator to get here. And right there, what happened? The fan got into the radiator and chewed it up. Really weird because, I mean, it was solid. It was mounted solid, but this top corner broke loose from the um, mount. And when it did, it just fell right over into the fan and chewed it up. Well, I've got about another hour or so before the radiator gets here, and I've already got it out because it only took a matter of minutes. The advantage is they'll have an old junk like this. Uh, another advantage is, I guess, to driving old stuff is the fact that, you know, really if it come down to it, I ordered a radiator for a 91 Wrangler, which I can drop in pretty quick. But if nothing else, if I could uh, get me a radiator dimensionally that would fit down inside there and have the uh, hoses on the correct side, I could have made it work. Unlike a lot of your newer cars, you know, you have everything specific because of all the crap that's in the way. Having um, old cars, old Jeeps like this that has just huge amounts of room, Sometimes you can make just any kind of junk work in a pinch. 
uh, I always carry tools with me because I've always driven old cars. So luckily I had all my tool stuff with me because I knew I was going to be about 200 miles from home right now, about 150 miles. So, you know, I'm just kind of waiting it out to my park gets here. So I thought I'd give you guys an update. I got them looking at a big hole in front of my Jeep now waiting on a radiator. So I'll haunt you guys in a bit. Look what's here and it's way ahead of time. Yes. Okay, let's slap this baby in and get back on the road. Got the new radiator setting in. And I need to go and get another top hose because I had that hose right there set up for that Ford Explorer radiator. So that neck is too small for that hose. And like I said, I'm a long ways from home. So I am, beggar's not going to be choosy. And I, so I'm going in there to get me another hose in just a moment. What had happened, this bracket right here was on that side over there. Notice right there it's missing. That bracket broke. Well, this piece right here, the uh, other one broke. Had a hairline fracture across there. Then right there with the last bit of it, the boom, it snapped. Which turned this side loose and got over into the fan. So, the adapting straps I had here that was adapting the uh, Ford radiator in, I had to cobble together to get over here to put the Jeep radiator back in because the original straps are at the house, 150 miles from here. So, the advantages to being growing up to be a the advantages of growing up being a broke redneck, you make it happen. Simple as that. So now I'm going to go on and get my top radiator hose, pour some juice in this baby, and hit the road. Alright, I'm out here. As you can tell, she's running, she's running, she's running. I'm on the back side of this advanced auto right here in uh, Knoxville. And you got him, Anton and Matt inside. Guys, I really can't express how much I appreciate you guys helping like you did. I mean, you guys are on the ball from there, you know, we just going through our parts inventory to, to, to hodgepodge stuff together to make it happen. I had that Ford radiator stuck in the sink, which I loved that radiator. It kept the sink in there really cool, no matter how hot it got, because it was a, it was a uh, one inch core, but it had two one inch cores in it, versus the stock Jeep one has one one inch core, uh, which is okay for a stock 4.0, but eventually when the stroker motor gets dropped, I'm gonna need to upgrade my radiator. That's all fine, fine dandy. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. For right now, I just need to get back on the road. So, Anton, Matt, um, man, you guys are just flat out freaking rock. So, I got this baby running, and I'm getting back on the road. Let's roll. Okay, here's the bottom view of the new radiator. Y'all see something that ain't quite right? The problem we have here is, this is the drain petcock here. It's hitting right on my sway bar. Now I'm still in Pigeon Forge right now and heading back toward Nashville. What my thought process here is that if I leave it like that, what I'm, what I'm afraid of, going on the road, hitting bumps, I mean, you kind of get vibrations. That's just nature of the beast. What my worries is that vibrating against the uh, sway bar is going to eventually stress crack it up in here and end up putting me on the side of the road again. So what I'm going to look at figuring out how to do or figure out what to do is probably the mounting tab up here. Figure out some way to get some wire ties and pull it back toward the front grill. Just at least get it off the sway bar. So therefore, I any vibrations in my case. It's not hitting the sway bar to cause any type of leaks. Because that would not be cool. Because I want to make it home without any crazy issues. I've had enough adventurous issues like that. But did have a great time in Pigeon Forge. Met some very fun people. Awesome people. So, anyway, let me see if I figure out how to tie this thing back real quick. Boom, baby. Redneck engineering at its finest. Let me tell you something. Wire ties. Never leave home without them. Be awesome. So, what I've done here, as you see, I got plenty of clearance now. Stick my pinky up there, but not actually all the way through. So I got enough clearance for the for the ride home. Wire tied here around that front tube. Also up around the mounting bracket it comes through. Oh crap! Drag it up. Ugh. Coming through my grill right here. Is it pretty? No. Do I care? No. But will it work? Heck yes. Now when I get home. I'll actually do it the right way. I'm going to reconfigure my mouse a little bit for this radiator because the factory radiator didn't have that little petcock that sticks down like that. That is a major boo-boo on someone's design. I don't know what they were thinking. But nonetheless, I work around it. 
there you go everybody documented one of my oh crap that's kind of a bad situation moments the trick to that all really is if you hear something that's not going right unless you're out in the middle of nowhere get up on your first exit and get to somewhere where it's close to an auto parts store i mean maybe you're pulling up for nothing but it's always safe to you know it's always better to be safe if you can what i've done is i think i documented earlier that i pulled off to a lowe's that way i could go inside there because get you no know, wire or whatever it is i may need because originally i thought it was my exhaust was hitting my drive shaft then as you guys see i lay down underneath and there's water everywhere and i'm like ah oh, crap this sucks then I realized the uh, fan had chewed through my radiator. Mm, that wasn't good. The guys at the Advanced Auto, man, I cannot, I cannot ever express how grateful I am to you guys. Got me a radiator there within a couple hours. And, well, also, you guys said that it's going to be like a 345. It actually arrived early. And if you guys will let me go out back behind the building, because, I mean, I expressed that I was screwed. You know, I was stuck. You guys let me go out back and change out the radiator you guys were helpful as far as finding the hose i need because you guys didn't have the i need a top radiator hose because i had the uh, ford explorer radiator in the beginning which cooled the motor better than a stock jeep does but the problem of it is the ford explorer had a larger um top radiator hose you guys didn't have the top radiator hose in stock and it was going to be a while before you get it so you guys were so freaking awesome to let me go through your hoses you had hanging up and you guys didn't help me you know try this one try this one try that one until we finally figured out one we could make work now what does it fit i have no earthly idea all i know i got it on and it fit the radiator i made it fit the water neck it's a little bit tight but all i know it don't leak it works i'm good good enough i was rolling so yeah again you guys advanced i cannot ever express enough how much you guys helped and you guys were freaking awesome so if you guys ever run across it hey here you are here you see it you know I didn't forget you. Is there anyone else out there in YouTube land that's uh, got to see my little adventure coming to Pigeon Forge? It's all about the it's all about the Jeep invasion, and there'll be a separate video for that. Cool, cool. So everyone, I really hope you enjoyed my little uh, adventure trip here. <laughs> hey, crap happens, but be prepared. That's all part of driving old rigs like this. You just got. I mean, growing up as a as a broke redneck, I guess you might say, to where didn't have the money to take your car to the shop, it kind of has its advantages because then you know stuff happens. You right, you got the you got the skills to fix it. And me growing up like as part of the reason I started the YouTube channel is that I realized I I grew up in a environment to where I had you no know, I was around cars all the time, cars, motorcycles, and such. I had picked up a lot of skills realizing that i've helped so many people throughout life then i realized there's a lot of people who doesn't did not have that luxury to learn these skills hence the youtube channel so therefore i give back to the people who need to you know little pointers to help everyone out so you know it's just a good thing to do to help people out so yeah i'm, I'm back to rambling again but you guys know what's up everyone if you like this video give me a thumbs up down below Subscribe if you have it, because every time I release one of these videos, and you subscribed, you will get a notification saying, yo, Chuck has released another video. Then if you got any cool comments down below, hey, you guys I met at the hotel and at the Jeep Invasion, you guys hit the comments down below. I'd really like to hear from you guys. You guys were freaking awesome. A lot of fun to hang out with. So everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. Peace. Later, y'all. Yes, I'm still laying under my Jeep. Why not? Later.